Welcome everyone to today's presentation on wall design for compression, presented on behalf of Think Brick Australia. So just some background information before we begin. This presentation will go through relevant standards such as AS3700 masonry structures to determine brick design for compression. This presentation will also go through design considerations, as well as a worked example for an unreinforced clay masonry wall. Any unreinforced masonry member designed to resist compressive forces other than its own self-weight shall have a minimum thickness of at least 90 millimeters. In determining the compressive capacity of a masonry member, the following factors shall be taken into account. Slenderness, effective eccentricity of loading at each end, the compressive characteristic strength of masonry, and the cross-sectional area of the masonry. There are two types of calculations when it comes to designing for compression, simple and refined. In this simple calculation, this considers three common loading conditions. A combined reduction factor is used for slenderness and eccentricity. In the refined calculation, the end eccentricities and support conditions are assessed. The refined calculation uses separate reduction factors for slenderness and eccentricity. Provisions are made for double curvature and resulting higher strength. This approach results in a more accurate, however less conservative design compared to the simple rules. There are three components when it comes to compression design. The basic compressive capacity, F0, which is calculated for a non-slender member. The slenderness and eccentricity effects, K, which is incorporated as reduction factors. And finally, the member capacity, KF0, which is obtained by multiplying the reduction factor by the basic compressive capacity. For compression, the following relationship has to be satisfied where FD is the design compressive loads that are acting on the cross-section member, K is the reduction factor for slenderness and eccentricity, and F0, which is the compressive capacity of the masonry's cross-section. Here we have two equations for determining the compressive capacity for ungrouted and grouted unreinforced masonry, where phi is the capacity reduction factor, F-M, which is the characteristic compressive strength of masonry, AB, which is the bedded area of the masonry unit, KC, which is the strength factor for grout and compression, F-CG, which is the design characteristic compressive strength of the grout, and AC, which is the design cross-sectional area of the grout. We will now go through a worked example for designing an unreinforced brick wall. This example requires us to design a load-bearing wall with a total factor design loading of 150 kilonewtons per meter. The wall is 2.7 meters high, made of standard brick units, using full bed M3 mortar. We will determine the compressive capacity of the wall and check whether it is greater than the design loading. The slenderness and eccentricity factor is determined from the three conditions. A wall loaded by a concrete slab, a wall loaded other than a concrete slab, such as a roof truss, or a wall loaded on one face. In our example, we will be using the condition where the wall is loaded by a concrete slab. The slenderness ratio is given by the equation shown, where AV is a vertical span coefficient, H is the height of the member, KT is the thickness coefficient, and T is the overall thickness of the masonry wall. As our wall is loaded by a concrete slab, we will be using the given equation. The vertical span coefficient AV and the thickness coefficient KT is 1 as we assume that the member is laterally supported with no engaged piers. With a wall height of 2.7 meters and a unit thickness of 110 millimeters, we find that the slenderness ratio is 24.5 and the reduction factor K is 0.46. The capacity reduction factor phi is 0.75 for unreinforced cord brick. The unit thickness is 110 millimeters and the joint thickness is 10 millimeters. The ratio of unit to joint thickness is determined and KH is determined from table 3.2 of AS3700. The unconfined compressive strength of the unit is 15 megapascals, and so the compressive strength of the masonry is calculated to be 5.4 megapascals. The characteristic compressive strength of the masonry and the unconfined compressive strength of the masonry units are determined from tables 3.1 and 3.2 respectively. Using full bedded M3 mortar with standard brick units, we are able to determine the characteristic compressive strength of the masonry system. 
The area of the bedded joint is determined to be 110,000 millimeters squared per meter run. Using the reduction factors phi and k, the factored compressive capacity of the masonry cross section is determined to be 204.9 kilonewtons per meter. As the design loading is less than the factored compressive capacity, the criterion is met and the wall is okay for use. Here we have a design chart that determines the compressive load capacities for walls that are 110 millimeters thick loaded by a concrete slab. This design chart uses compressive strength of the masonry and wall height to determine the compressive load capacity of the wall. The association has also curated a compression manual that provides design requirements for compression for clay masonry. It contains a lot of useful information about the design and construction requirements and I highly urge you guys to check it out. If you have any other questions regarding compression design, please don't hesitate to contact the association and we will be more than happy to help you guys out. The association also offers a wide range of free resources available to the public, such as technical manuals, research papers, and case studies. The association also has a technical hotline where we can answer any of your brick or block related inquiries. Should you have any questions regarding the design and construction of brick or block, please feel free to give us a call on the technical hotline. This concludes today's presentation on war design for compression. Thank you for your time, and we hope you enjoyed today's presentation.